it is time for the hot topic of the hour. Tonight is the final night of the De Democrat National Convention. Vice President Kamala Harris set to speak and formally accept the Democrat presidential nomination. All of this without sitting for an interview, without holding a formal press conference, and without releasing any details of her policy agenda. Here's what Harris's running mate, Minnesota Governor Tim Walz, said last night. He has never hesitated to reach across that aisle if it meant improving your lives. And she's always done it with energy, with passion, and with joy. We've got a chance to make Kamala Harris the next president of the United States. But I think we owe it to the American people to tell them exactly what she'd do as president before we ask them for their votes. Waltz also promised tax cuts for home buyers, uh, forgetting to mention median priced new home monthly mortgage payments are up 85 percent under the Biden Harris administration. Kamala Harris is going to cut your taxes. If you're getting squeezed by prescription drug prices, Kamala Harris is going to take on Big Pharma. If you're hoping to buy a home, Kamala Harris is going to help make it more affordable. And no matter who you are, Kamala Harris is going to stand up and fight for your freedom to live the life that you want to lead. All right, so here's what we know about Kamala Harris's economic plan so far. As you can see, we've got tax increases across the board, 28% corporate tax. Uh, that's up from 21% currently. 44.6% capital gains tax is what she supports. That's up from 19% currently. She's uh, backing a 25% tax on unrealized gains. She's got price controls ideas because she says she's going to federally ban price gouging. No tax on tips. However, there are guardrails there as well. She's limiting that, and she's got up to 6,000 child tax credit. Several high-profile and wealthy Democrats speaking in support of Harris Walsh last night. Watch. I know that Vice President Harris is ready to take us to new heights. She is a leader of strength and wisdom and eloquence on policy. What does her opponent do with his voice? He mostly talks about himself. He's like one of those tenors opening up before he walks out on stage like I did, trying to get his lungs open by singing, me, 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 me. <laughs> when Kamala Harris is president, every day will begin with you, 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 you. Let us choose optimism over cynicism, because that's the best of America. And let us choose inclusion over retribution. Let us choose common sense over nonsense, because that's the best of America. And let us choose the sweet promise of tomorrow over the bitter return to yesterday. We won't go back. Let's all choose Kamala Harris. <laughs> All right, there's Oprah uh, making her mark. You know, I, it struck me, Doug Collins, last yeah. night when Bill Clinton said, let's choose peace over war. And I thought to myself, well, wait a second. There were no wars <laughs> under President Trump, <laughs> and we're in two wars right now. Well, it goes so, back. Yeah, let's choose peace. Yeah, let's choose peace. I, would love to, I used to have to wait till Sunday evening to watch the wonderful world of Disney and the fantasy. <laughs> but now we just don't have to. We watch it every night in the Democratic Convention because it's, it, it is a narrative that is being struck <clears throat> that is not matching reality. They talk about the they bring on families of hostages. They talk about Israel, but outside they're talking about, you know, the pro-Hamas uh, crowds that are protesting. You get the issue of the economy. You get the problems. There's a line that's been going through the whole Democratic Convention that says we won't go back. I personally, if this is their plan, I want to go back. I yeah. want to go back to gas that's $1.50. I want to go back to diesel prices that were lower. I want to go back to interest rates that were lower. I want to go back to the things of peace that we had under Donald Trump. If that's the argument they're making, they're trying to sell something that's just not there. Yeah, you know, it's, uh, it, it's amazing to hear a lot of the optimism when we don't even know what she's going to do, Lee Carter. You know, I think we're in a very, very dangerous place, though, of not seeing what's happening right in front of our eyes. This is the very same thing that... Democrats said about Republicans in 2016. They criticized Donald Trump as saying he hasn't promised any real policy things. He's only talking about building this wall, getting jobs back. He's giving Americans, he's saying this make America great again thing. What does that even mean? And I think a lot of people are watching the DNC and saying the same thing. What is this? We'll never go back. What does this do something? What does all this mean? What's happening right now is that Democrats, for the first time in a long time, have hope. 
They have hope that they're going to take control back. They have hope in their future. They're not holding their breath, watching their leader saying, like, is he going to mess up? And unbelievably, they're giving her the benefit of the doubt. Just remember, a few weeks ago, only 31 percent of Democrats were excited about voting for their nominee. Now, 88 percent enthusiasm in just three weeks. Yeah. It's phenomenal what they've done. Yeah, they, they definitely have lifted the enthusiasm level, and that's important because they'll come out uh, and vote.